back with you, the author of The Evolution of America's Homebred Terrace, The Changing Culture, Judson Baycott, original founding member of Westside Crips. Now, gang intervention. That shit does not work. How are you going to tell people who's been involved in this war for 50 years, Crip Wars, and Blood Wars for 50 years, and they're indoctrinating every generation to follow them to cease the hostilities. It's not gonna work. Too much black, bad blood on these side. Too much blood been spilled. The key to, to the gang uh, problem in, in Southern California is to cut the recruitment line. It's all about the youth, the kids. It's all about, it's no longer about a gang member. Because if you've been a gang member for four, five years, 10 years, I'm not going to change your mind. I'm not going to get you to stop. And if you've been involved in shooting wars, how can I, and your brother been shot, or your cousin, or even your mother, your father been shot. How can I come tell you, hey man, you need to see, fool, no, because I, you know, I've experienced it. Meaning, my brother was shot twice by rolling 60s, both times in the back. And so I had to come to the realization within myself. And back in the days, yeah, I, I was with it. Now, uh, I'm not so much mad at, at 60s, I'm mad at the ones that did it. That's the ones I want. And three of them is dead, there's one still alive. I don't know, they don't know where he at. But I know who he was. I know his name, I know who he was. But three of them, it was four of them together. Three of them is dead and one is still alive. But those are the ones. Not nobody that's coming up under them that didn't have anything to do with it because I can understand that gang thing. I understand the culture, you know? So uh, it is not about gang members anymore. Folks, we gotta get this one straight because there's too many innocent kids and too many of our elders, too many of our toddlers being killed, what? By gang violence, stray bullets. And what are they, what are they classified as? Collateral damage, which is nothing more than unintended targets. How many more of unintended targets do we need to uh, suffer before we say enough is enough? It's all about our kids. And you know who, uh, you know, a couple people got it straight. A couple people got it straight. And you know who I admire the hell out of LeBron James. Not because he's a Laker and I'm out of LA. I admire him because of the man he is and he kept his promise. I promise. No. To get his basketball skills, you know, look what he's doing for the black communities where he come up out of. And he's still doing more. But no, we want to bash that brother Bassett. No, we need to be standing up giving that, that brother a standing ovation. Because he's doing something that I hope that we all should be doing. Making a promise to our youth, our kids, and keeping it. Because it's about the kids now. It's not about no gang members anymore. Because you're not going to stop gangs. Gangs have been around for 50 some years now. And counting. And they're going to be around 50 more. I won't be here. But I do know it's not about a gang member anymore. You know, until gangs understand that we're going to be around for the rest of our life, at least we can respect the, the next person's right to do what they want to do as long as it doesn't infringe on mine. But it'll never happen. Too many hard heads on either side, bloods and cribs. And then. Who's suffering the most? Mothers. Because every time a kid is killed, who suffers? A mother. Fathers, yeah, they suffer, but the mothers suffer the most. How many times have you heard when a kid has been killed, the first thing a mother says, oh my God, why me? What did I do wrong? You haven't done anything wrong. You haven't done anything wrong. And we need to get it to a point to where black mothers don't have to say that anymore, especially over a child that's not a gang member, that's never been a gang member, doesn't expire to be a gang member. All they want to do is go to school, go to park and play, but putting their life at risk every day. 
it's not about the gang members, man, anymore. It's about our, our youth, our toddlers. It's about kids who want to go the straight path, man. We have to understand that, gang members and all. Let's, hey, man, let them kids do what they want to do, man. They're not harming you. They just want to make an honest, honest living. They just want to grow up to be someone. Maybe you don't. So why you want to infringe on them? Why you want to make them miserable? Make their life miserable? Because talking to the Crips and Bloods. Now y'all know it's only two things that happen out of two things good about gang banging, and they're not good. But if you want to call them good, death in prison. It's good you get a, 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 a you can go to prison. Death is final. But if you're go to prison for the rest of your life, you're taking out the equation also. What good are you to the black community? Or to your kids if you have any? So, you know, it's not, man, uh, come on. Go back to my home. That's why I got nothing but mad love for you, Big Sody. Your sons are so respectful. That's why I got nothing but love and respect for them. You know, the... Uh, it's not about the kids. I mean, it's not about them gang members anymore, y'all. We have to get this one straight. Gang intervention. What good has the gang intervention interveners have of intervening in gang wars? What good have they had? They've done. What good have they done in Chicago? Huh? What good have they done in LA? None. It's about the kids, y'all. And then, you know, you're going to hear me preach on this all the time. It's about the kids. It's about the kids. And you're going to hear me say a lot of things that's controversial, but it's true. And it's fact. Until next time, get the book, read it. I'll see you in a minute. One love.